Hi and welcome back to the channel. This is the second time I've done this video because I used the other camera before and it kept focusing on his face or his face rather than this face. Now I can see the virtues of doing that but didn't come out right. So anyway let's start again. What do you reckon the first science fiction movie is? Now I know but I'm about to tell you. But what do you think it is? Do you think it's Star Wars? The Matrix? that one where they injected Raquel Welsh into a guy's brain? No, it's much, much earlier, 126 years ago, in fact. And I'm gonna tell you about it right after this stuff. I suppose we have to define our terms a little bit when we're saying science fiction in this case. One of the things, at least in movies, that define science fiction is and they're having an impossible machine. All science fiction of a certain type has an impossible machine in it. It might be a TARDIS, it might be a platform that rises up into the sky, gets hit by lightning so that the dead body is sewed together from body parts can come to life. It might be the Starship Enterprise, it might be a time machine, it might be a time tunnel. It might be the Millennium Falcon, it might be the Matrix, but one way or the other, a lot of science fiction movies depend on an impossible machine. And the very first science fiction movie almost created the concept of an impossible machine. So which movie is it? It's not George Melies' A Trip to the Moon. Good though it is, and Melies was a magician when it came to cinema. He really put the entertainment into movies in so many ways. When I went to Paris, one of the things I had to do was go to Père Lachaise Cemetery and visit the grave of Georges Méliès. I got a photo of it, but I had to hang off a railing to get it. It's in a very awkward position. But he was the showman showman when it came to early cinema. But it wasn't him. A Trip to the Moon came out in 1902. And it's seven years before that that we get the first science fiction film. 44 seconds long. It ran on 17 metres of film. It's not a long movie. You could watch it 200 times in the time it takes you to watch Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Actually, 204. I have a, a, a weird love for this film because it was the first and because it's got a cute little conceit and because it's a little bit of fun. And like many other movies of this genre, it was remade a number of times. So what is this movie I am teasing you about? It's called La Chacouterie Mécanique and it was made by Auguste and Louis Lumiere, the Lumiere brothers, in 1895. So it's 126 years old this year. 127 if you're seeing this in 2022. 128 if you're seeing it in 2023. I don't know when you're watching this video. But I like it a lot and I'm going to show it to you now with some beautiful French music in the background. As you can see, it's a simple conceit. You throw a pig in one end of a box and out the other end come all of the different bits of it, the hams, the sausages, the head and the rest of it. So it's a kind of impossible machine at its very essence and in a very, very basic way. But it's a cute little film. It's the sort of thing that kids would make with a camera if they had access to a butcher shop. And I, I, I like it for that. I think it's, it's sweet, it's lovely. And it's one of the first times that cinema moved away from pure documentary stuff. In the same year, the Lumiere brothers did a number of other films. They did a film of the workers from their factory walking out the front door. They did another one of workmen knocking down a wall. They did another one with a joke about a guy stepping on a hose and squirting his friend in the face with the hose. So they, they did other things, but this is the first time they went totally off reality and created something that just didn't exist before this time. Like many movies that have been remade 
this original one, Charcuterie Mechanique, is better than the copies of it that were made. Now I'm going to just read off the screen what they are because there's a bit of detail here. There was a movie in 1897, two years after this movie, called Making Sausages by a guy called George Albert Smith. And it's kind of icky because it's a version of this movie but they throw cats and dogs into the machine and sausages come out the bottom end. So they throw cats and dogs in the top, sausages come out the bottom. Icky. There was a version, uh, American Mutoscope and Biograph made the sausage machine which was a bit of a parody of the conveyor belt system, so they threw things in one end and stuff came out the other. Then Edison, Thomas Alva Edison's company, Edison Studios, did a version with fun at the butcher shop in 1901 and Dog Factory in 1904, both of which showed pets being turned into sausages because that apparently was a thing. But again, the originals are best. Uh, pigs are designed to be eaten I suppose, unless you're a vegetarian or a vegan, in which case I apologise to you. But for the most part, and at the and in La Bella Poke, at the end of the 19th century, pork was something that was a staple for people's diets, I suppose. But uh, cats and dogs, not so much. Let's not go there. The people who remade La Chacouterie Mechanique were probably being racist. And some of the people I've seen in the clips of those films which aren't even good enough to show on this channel, are kind of parodies of other races. So it's a bit of a racist reinterpretation of the original, whereas the original was just Frenchmen making sausages and hams and things like that. So, yeah, um, but I'm, I'm incredibly fond of this movie for a number of reasons. The first one is it's the first one of its kind. And I can see a continuity down through the years of that initial conceit of somebody having an impossible machine, which goes to this very day. The turnstile in Tenet is an impossible machine, just as much as the mechanical butcher is way back in 1895. So that's the story of the very first science fiction movie. I'm glad I was able to give it to you, and I like the idea of going back to the first sources in cinema and kind of having some fun with it and just learning the history of it and sharing it with you. So thank you very much for watching. Of course, please subscribe if you think I've earned it. Hit the like button, hit the bell notification, and leave a comment and tell me what you think of this video. Uh, you can also help the channel by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema, and for as little as $1 US per month, donating to help the channel stay afloat with equipment that doesn't focus on faces other than mine. As always, Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch some fun movies. Take care of yourself, stay safe, wash your hands, put the mask over your nose, and I'll catch you next time.